Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth video of Theorem Proving in Coq. In this video and few other upcoming videos, we'll see dependent type programming in Coq. My name is Mukesh, and I'm a senior research associate at the University of Cambridge. So let's get started. Before I start writing code, um, the code I'm going to write would be available here on my GitHub. Um, it's Mukesh Tiwari and CoqUtil. And here I put all, all the, the code, dependent type codes that I'm doing in, in this course of time. So you can see all the, the source code here. And one more thing I would suggest, if you are very curious about learning dependent type programming, there is this excellent book by Adam Chipala, uh, Certified Dependent Type Programming, which you should definitely read. It's, it's uh, one of the best resources you can, you can um, see online for dependent type programming in Coq and many examples that I'm going to show you um, is inspired by this book. So let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to encode length dependent list or we call vectors. So let's see, how do we do that? And control C, control N, and we define data type using a keyboard called inductive. And I'm going to name this as a vector, which takes A an element, A, is of type type or sort type that and it returns a type. And it has two constructors. There are two ways to construct vector. So first one is nil. That says that vector A has length zero and cons that stake edge Let's, let me write it. That takes an element A, vector A of length n, and it gives vector A of type 1 plus n. And I need to put n in the context, so here goes n. And control C, control n, and cock accepted because it's green. I'm going to do a slight change rather than writing one plus n, I'm going to write here as one successor of n, which is one plus n, but it's much nicer. So now, <clears throat> now that we have a defined vector, let's see how can we construct an element. So let's say if eval, so I can say check nil, and nil, had, nil takes a type and returns a vector of length zero. Let's see. I'll compute in nil and let's say not. So it's vector of not. So nil not is, is a constructor that gives me a vector of type not of length zero. Okay, let me say eval compute in cons. And here I'm going to, so now let's see. I want to do check cons. Now, if you could see the type of cons here, then it takes element of type, a natural number, then element of type A, a vector and then it returns. So what I'm going to do, put underscore for A. This is first. Second underscore. Now, for this one, 
I'm going to put a value of natural number, which is say like 10. And for this one, I'm going to put nil. So I'm going to put nil nat. And you see, it, it gave me a vector of natural number of length one. And this is the only element. Now it's not very different from list data structures, but in this video, I haven't discussed much about list. I'm starting from vectors because I want to show you dependent type programming. So maybe in future videos, I'll come to list and you'll see that this thing would be gone. But anyway, nonetheless, we can construct. Um, we can construct again, um, eval compute in cons underscore underscore, let's say I put 20 here and let me copy this. And we have a vector of length two and 20 is the head element. 10 is the next element, so 20. So it's it roughly it should look like 20 comma 10, right? Now, <sighs> it's pretty annoying that we need to pass this and these this even this number itself is pretty annoying to pass every time these underscores are so we can simplify them and cock type checker is sometimes very happy sometimes uh, infer them and it does not complain if it complains we can give it explicitly so let's make it implicit I'm going to write, so what I'm going to say, I'm going to use this keyword argument, and I'm going to put nil, and then I'm going to say here, arguments, yes. So now let me see if check nil shows. So if you remember, when I haven't had this, nil was quantified over for all quantifier so that's it but now look here it's some implicit type it does not know so we what we have done is we push that quantifier you know, so we have somehow hidden that quantifier using this keyword called argument nil uh, and than in the bracket A. Now what I'm going to do the same thing for cons because cons take two unnecessary argument. Well, I will not say unnecessary, but too much verbose. So let's argument and go on cons A, N, and then again, this thing. And now let me show you, I can totally write this as Cons 20, cons 10, and nil, and then I no longer need to see that. It's much clearer, it's much nicer compared to what we have seen here at the top. So th this is the first trick of this video that how we can hide some unnecessary type information or information that could be that could that could be inferred from the context in which we are all working so now that we know how to define a length index vector a vector we use keyword inductive then we have two constructor that's the only way to construct this vector. And the crucial thing is that it tracks the length in this data type itself. 
and how we can hide some of unnecessary information using this keyword called arguments. So now that we have defined this, let's write some function. And one of the function I'm going to write is to append two vectors. And the reason is because I'm going to demonstrate some concepts. So hopefully in this video, we'll just write one function in many different ways, vector appending two vectors. So I'm, what is a vector append? Well, vector append, say if you give me a vector 2010, and let's say the vector append function I represent by plus plus. And if you give me 30 and 40, it should return me, the vector append function should return me 20, 10, 30, and 40, right? So that's the vector append function. And the idea is very simple. We'll recurse over this list, and then we append the rest of the list. So let me write this function. What do I mean by recursing over lists? So vector append, I'm going to name it vector Going to name it vector append first. So this is our first attempt. And I'm going to say it takes m n of type, takes an implicit type vector a. So when I put it in curly brackets, you can think of it like this. Now I'm putting this thing in the function itself as implicit data type. So if I do it like this, and I'll show you what is the difference between this and this, okay? So let's assume I'm following this. This trick uh, implicit, and I'm going to write a nat here. And it takes a vector u of vector a m, another vector v of type vector a n. And what does it return? It returns a vector a of type m plus n. And now I'm going to say match u with. If it's nil, then I return v. If it's cons h t. And I'm going to do cons h and this function append and the rest of the vector t and the second argument v. And I put n here. And you see, um, cock type checker is happy because it accepted it accepted my definition. Now as I promised, I'm going to show you what would happen if I put this simply in, in, a, in this bracket. Well, let's see. And now it says that, right, you cannot. So here it gets tricky. I was not expecting it. So let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's make it this one in curly brackets. I'll come to that. And I think here I need to give the types explicitly. Okay, so this, I was not expecting this. I thought it would go through, but I'll demonstrate this concept to you if I pass it explicitly in a more controlled environment when I'm writing these things using. Actics. All right, so that's fine. 
So now if you see this, this function here, So this function here, the type of u is vector dot a0. Remember it's nil. And what it's returning is, and the return, and the return is v, and it returns v whose type is vector a n and the reason if you look at the return type here it's zero because here m is zero right u has let's make it bigger so m is zero here and v is of n and when i return v Cock type checker internally checks if the return type is of type factor a m plus n. m is zero here, so it's substitute m is equal to zero, and then it simplifies and check it. Now, what would happen if I say return? Um, let's see. I'm trying to return some impossible, something that that does not match with this thing so let's return cons 1v and now this whole equation had changed why because when u is nil m is zero but now he, and v is n but here we are returning one plus n this factor has length s n but Cock expects of length of length n. So this should be type error. Now let's see. And lo and behold, I hope you can see my error because Zoom always posts my video on the left hand side. So let's see. Okay. But anyway, if you if you replay this in your editor, you'll see that it says that the term V has type vector A N while it's expected can't unify. Well, it says something else, but um, let's see. Uh, no, it should be can't unify. So let's do that. Cons. Um, Okay, not a per oh, okay. Okay, no, I think it should be fine. Cons one V should be All right. Okay, so I hope it's the same error. I'm not making any mistake, but you get the point. Maybe <clears throat> I should. Um... Okay, so I wanted to demonstrate. So let's return nil here. Yeah, so this error is more informative. What it says is the term nil has type vector a zero while it is expected to have a type vector a zero, m one is equal to zero <clears throat> plus n. So <clears throat> cock rightly, refuses our Our term, and now I know why cons one v is error. Well, the problem is v has type a. While here I'm giving it 
it not. So I can get rid of this. I can turn this into not, not, not. And now it gives me the right error that cons one V has type vector not SN. While it is, excuse me, while it is expected to have a type vector not zero plus n. So one plus n cannot unify with zero plus n because they are not same term. So let's get back. So we, we understand if we make a mistake, the type checker won't be happy and it will say, it'll bark at us. So let's get back, let's make it more general. Now let's return v, right. So that's our first vector append. Let's move to, now I'm going to encode the same thing, but I'm going to show you a trick <clears throat> which will be very helpful in future and we'll use it a lot. So I'm going to write, I'm going to copy this, paste it. The only thing I'm going to do is change the name. I'm going to make it second. And I'm going to call it second. Okay. And it type checks as usual. But remember, here the length of u is m is zero. And here length of m is m is equal to some s m prime. for some m, for some m prime. Now, oh, how can I do that? How can I, how can I get this term? So one way is I'm going to say match u as u prime. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating another variable u prime and binding every instance of u to u prime. So what I mean, so here u is nil. So u prime is going to be nil. Here u is cons hd. So in this one, u prime is going to be cons hd. So you can see that they are same. There are some technical reasons for that. In match as u prime in, and this is my expression in which I'm going to match u, obvious. And I'm going to name it vector, I'm going to A, and I'm going to rename this M as M prime. And you'll see, because again, I'm binding it and I had a, you know, they are same, but I'm, I'm making it more general. Okay. And then you see, okay. So first trick, uh, Cock complains that I cannot write a there, so I need to write it. All right, as I promised, I wanted to demonstrate to you that the value of m here is zero. Unfortunately, I could not. Let's do another thing. I'm going to say return m is equal to m prime, and I'm going to put here vector a m prime, plus n. All right. So I can demonstrate this thing just using using an error, right? So it, it, it gives me some error. What it says that the term v has type vector a n while it is expecting a function type. So I can get rid of this error if I remove this thing. But that's on purpose. So what I'm going to do is second trick. I'm going to pass here eq refl. And since cock knows that m is equal to m prime, it will be very happy. Okay, and I need to pass a function hm.
And you see, it all went like a magic. I can demonstrate this thing just because I have experience with cock. And I got that experience using writing dependent type programs in tactic mode. Excuse me for a moment. Yeah. I got that experience just because I got that experience just because writing a lot of dependent type programs in tactic mode because there is a very fine controlled way that you can see what's going on. And here is my claim. Cock has best of both worlds, dependent type and tactics. And you can seamlessly integrate them together to write a bigger dependent type programs. But more importantly, you can understand what's going on under the hood. And I'm going to demonstrate it through this example that you can see all these things that I have written and how in each step cog proceeds. So let's write this. So now I am going to, <clears throat> I'm going to rename this to third. And I'm going to put a dot here. And this is, now I'm going to write this function in tactic mode, not tactic mode entirely because I need to demonstrate. So I wrote a proof here. Since proofs are programs, there's nothing different, nothing fascinating here. So now I'm going to do refine. And I'll tell you what is refine. I have shown you in the previous videos. Let me show you. Let me copy paste this thing here. And it type checks. Now let me show you what's going on. My claim is M is zero here. So I'm going to put underscore here and another underscore here. And it's called holes. I'm telling Cork to figure out, you know, tell me what terms I need to put here. I don't know at this point. Well, I know, but I'm just testing Cox. I'm showing just Cox ability to, to type check, to show me. And now you see here, remember I claimed here, but I could not demonstrate why M is equal to zero. But here you can easily see that. Okay, so M is equal to M prime and the the first thing is it says zero plus m. Now watch here another trick. What would happen if I replace this m prime by m since they are equal? Even though m is zero, you see that this changed to m. If I replace it by m prime, now it substitute that value. So that's the reason, you know, you do match u as u prime because you have in each branch, you have the concrete value gets substituted in return value and you can see the difference. So that was the first thing. I, <clears throat> so now let me show you another trick. I can very much write this function in proof mode. So I'm going to do, let's say, intros HM. And I can do CBN or SIMPL, whichever you like. And at this point, I give you this tactic exact V. Right, let's go for another goal. 
So I'm going to do intros HM CBN and I'm going to give exact. So exact is a keyword when you really want to give Galina term in proof mode. Uh, same as refine. So there are two tactics refine. Refine is a very powerful tactic where you can fill all the um, you can fill your skeleton and then proceed from there. So it's like you have a high level idea program. What are you going to write? But you don't want to track all the details. You can't write dependent types in everything in as a as a as a function because it's too much detail. And that's where the power of cock lies. It gives you ability to write your function in high level mode and then use tactics to just fill the gaps. So let's see here, I'm going to fill the gap. I'm going to give cons edge and then I'm going to write, you see I have a induction hypothesis, which I also can't see because of my video, but let me, okay. Vector third, and I'm um, given that underscore underscore vector am. So I am going to give it t, and that rest one is v, and the goal. And I can now show you what term it has synthesized under the hood. So it has, so you see here at nil, we haven't used HM anywhere. So it replaced it by underscore. I just wanted to demonstrate the concept. And similarly here also, we haven't used HM. So, and then it exactly does the same thing that we did. So now <clears throat> what I can do here, let's do, let's fill, fill these terms. So I'm not going to name HM because we are not using it, but there will be a programs in future where we need to keep track of these details. So it'll come and I'm trying to slowly introduce these concepts. So I'm going to introduce and I'm going to return B. That's fine. Here also, I'm going to put underscore here. And then I'm going to just copy this because it's the. All right. And it has, so I can now put defined, defined. Right. So what is take away from this example here? We have a tactic called refine that gives us a power to fill all the details, but not every detail. And then we can use it that tactic mode, or if we are brave enough, then we can fill every single term, but we have a choice here. It's, and that's the power that we can go this way or we can this way. Cock is not forcing us to just use either. No, you can just combine these two walls and depending on your preference, you can have your sweet spot and that's where you can write dependent type programs. So, so far so good. So this is our third definition. And now I showed you the concepts. Now I'm going to write one more or maybe two more. Wait, we'll see. And so let me check. Uh, 
I have already posted this somewhere. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to copy it. And wait, watch for this. I'm going to name it fourth. And deliberately, I'm going to change it to definition for a reason that will be clear in a moment. And hawk happy, I'm going to do proof. And I'm going to copy this. Let's remove this for a moment so that we don't get error. So the base case is discharge as usual, not a problem. But if, if you are inductive, the recursive case, then we have nothing in our context. If you can see, hope my video is not entering the interfering with the context. So if you can see our goal, there is nothing in assumption that can do anything for us. Well, that's very, but because we cannot prove this, we cannot write this function using definition. One way is of course, I can turn this into fixed point and then I get a recursive equation here, but I have a point that in future, well, you can use both, but I just wanted to show you another, another trick, another way to write. So definition does not give us any fixed point equation, any inductive hypothesis, induction hypothesis. So we should think about it. So let's do. What I'm going to do is I can say something like this, fix fn u. Oh, we get error. And the error is pretty cryptic, but what it roughly means is it has some issue with type checking. So let me take a step back and write this thing. In a, in a systematic way. So in this way, it's a bit difficult. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to generalize this concept, but let's wait if I can figure this out using my, okay, right. Hmm. It, in this, with this one, it's tricky and I don't know if I can write. So I'm going to do a trick. So if you remember from our previous videos, it's always nice to have some generalization. And then the reason we need generalization because we get a very strong induction hypothesis. So let me show you what do I mean by generalization. Let's see. I'm going to remove this. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this n in, in the goal. So generalize dependent v. 
Okay, I should have done N because N would push both N and V. You can do either way. You can do and then revert N. It's the same, but you don't need to write two tactics. Now generalize dependent M. And I could do that for A as well, but it's not needed in this case. Let's keep A fixed. A fixed, and now I need to write a program that takes M, a natural number, a vector, and another natural number, and another vector, and zip them. So I'm going to do here refine. And the keyboard is fixed, and I'm going to name this Fn. And I'm going to name this first argument M, which is M. And I'm going to name this as U, U. And I'm going to tell Cog that I would be decreasing on U. And that way is to take struct. And I put underscore here. So if you can see my goal, and the hypothesis, it has everything. Now we get a fixed point equation, or if I rename it, say IHN, so you can think of it's like an induction hypothesis, whatever is your preference, you can basically write anything, any name here. I prefer FN because it says function. Some people just take this name and paste it here. So it just, it feels like that you're writing a fixed point and you're calling, but it's just a name, so nothing fancy. So I'm, I'm going to name it Fn here. And since I have told Cog that I'm going to decrease on u, so let's do that. I'm going to do match u with nil, and I'm going to put underscore here because I don't know what I'm going to fill at this point. And that's the power. You don't have to think everything in advance. You know, you progress over time and see how are you going to build this term. HD and put underscore here and all right. So you see here the value change, but I want to, let's keep, that thing in our mind, h as u prime in vector m, m prime. And then I am going to do return m is equal to m prime, but I can construct many other information here as well. And let's put here underscore. So it's barking on us because I need to tell for all n. I am going to give it a vector a n and then I'm going to do vector a n prime plus n. Okay. So what is the error? Okay, okay, I see what was the problem, right. Okay, so I did a miss, not a mistake here. So again, I need to pass a EQ raffle here. And the reason is, let me show you what would happen if, if I get rid of this thing. So for a moment, you see this, extra information, let's get rid of it. So all we say is the return type is this. So let me copy this thing, paste it here uh, as M prime. And this is what we need to return. 
Now, what we are going to do is we are going to make it more general. So what we are going to do here is we are going to say, it, oh, M is equal to M prime. So we introduce another term here that will say M is equal to zero. So let's make sure that I, I don't put any under this thing here. And hopefully you can see my error, but what it says is, this whole thing has a type m is equal to m arrow and then it gives a type for all n vector a n vector a m plus n while it is expected to have type for all n so it's it's telling that let me the type checker is saying that the type of this whole refined thing is this, but it expects this. Now, if you watch carefully, you see this whole thing. This whole thing is this thing. So this thing is coming extra. So one way is I can put underscore. And when I put underscore, you see, I get an extra goal here, m is equal to m. And I know that is just one way to, to construct this term, Q raffle. So that's gone, but it's up to you. All right. And let's see here. And let me show you again to emphasize that. What would happen if I just see? So that zero is replaced by M, even though M is equal to zero. So it's the trick that we need to know how to let the information flow along the terms, right? Okay, well, we are not going to use this. Um, one interesting thing would be to infer uh, M is equal to M prime and what is it? Um, U is equal to U prime, and let me put another EQ raffle here. All right, so now it's barking on us. What it's saying that U prime has type vector AM prime, and let me paste these errors. So what it's saying that the term U has type vector A M prime, while it is expected to have, but we know that, that these two are equal. So Cox should have been able to prefer, infer that thing, right? So let's do that. Well, we are not going to use this thing, but I, I feel tempted that I should reveal this mystery at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this thing and remove this function uh, because I'm going to turn this into a dependent function. Okay, so that's our for all. And here, now I need to convince Cock type checker that these two are of the same length, M and M prime have the same length. So let's check another thing. Check EQ rect. So let's see. Let's copy it. And let me paste it here. Okay, so A is implicit, I don't need to. If you give me X and a property over that, a function over that type, I, I call it function, many people call it proposition, but they are all same. And an instance, a concrete object that this PX hold, Remember, uh, if you instantiate this with vector and this with a natural number, then you have 
two instances that you can construct either nil, that is of p0, cons, that is of p and some n. And if you give me another element of type y and a proof that they are equal, then I can just translate them. So let's see what is a problem here. Well, if we somehow replace this m prime by m, okay? So if we instantiate this by m prime, this as a vector, this as a p m prime, which is of this thing, and this by m, and we have a proof that m is equal to, sorry, m prime is equal to m. We have a slightly off proof. Then we can convince cock type checker. So let's write eq direct. I'm going to write here m prime. Uh, func w such that vector a w. Oh, let's go that way. Okay. And here I'm going to give. So if you instantiate p m prime, that is exactly u prime. And I'm going to. So u prime is um, the u prime has type this, right? So if you see this is m prime, this function is, this takes a w and returns vector a w. If you feed this function m prime, you would get vector a m prime and u prime is an element of that thing. Y is going to be, well, we want to replace it by m. And there is a slight caveat here. Well, our proof demands x is equal to y. x here is m prime and y here is m, while our proof is just m is equal to m prime. So you can change this thing into m prime is equal to m. Let me demonstrate first. And then right here, pf, it's happy, but that's wrong. Not wrong, let's stick to that, m is equal to m prime. And then you write here, eq sim, pf, right? So equality is symmetric. So I just changed it. And now I have a lot of information, which I'm not going to use, but I'm demonstrating it. So let's write this thing in a proof mode. I'm going to do intros pf, hu, and then I'm going to introduce n and v. So if you can see the goal at this point, hopefully you can see, but if not, let me paste it in my, you see now when I made this type richer, I, I have a more information. One information says that, oh, m is equal to zero. U is equal to eq rect, this thing, this thing. So if you, let me see if I can simplify that. CBN in, okay, it's not simplifying. That's fine. We're not going to, to use that information. It says that, oh, e, u is equal to this, this nil stuff which I'm a bit surprised that it's not um, coming is equal to nil, but that's fine in this case. We'll see in future how it plays out and, and all this thing. We are of course not going to use this, but I wanted to demonstrate to you that how once you know some tricks, 
it's super easy to write this this dependent type program so here let's see um And now, depending on your taste, I can say like exact v. And again, let's do that. Let's in assume intros everything. Okay, okay, and it's already is in use. So, all right. So I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to name it. Okay, nt and v, right? And I'm going to do CBN and I'm going to apply exact cons edge FN. And I'm not going to write M. So that's so if you look at induction hypothesis, it's this. So FN is this. So I'm not going to put, I'm just going to leave whatever M is because it can be inferred. And that's the beauty. You cannot write exactly that in just alone term mode. And I'm going to give a vector AM, which I know that it's um, T. And then I'm going to again leave N um, for N and then going to give B. And I have everything now if you are curious you can see what we have built here it's slightly more involved but that's the whole point you don't want to write all these things by your hand right and if you want you can write here so let me I can do that. I can do define. Um, it's happy. If you are, if wanted to understand, so let's see here. I'm going to write a fun pf h u n b, and then I'm just going to return b. So first tactic is done. Fun pf h u n b, and now I'm going to return this thing. defined and in future videos when we'll be writing this is the pattern we'll be following and probably a lot there might be some tricks that I don't know. I'll like to invite some more experienced people um, in these tutorials. So let's walk through this example one more time. So what these two did is it made it more general. And if you remember from our previous videos, um, our goal is to get a very general inductive hypothesis. I would probably next video would show you with some very, uh, some other example, writing this, this proof mode where this whole thing does not work, but I need to figure out that detail. The next I do is I write refine. So refine is a tactic in which you can fill, you can write program using functions. And what I mean here is within refine, you fill Kalina terms. So you see it very much looks like when you write fixed point and everything, those are Galena terms. But here we are mixing two walls, tactics and Galena terms. And in order to let Koch understand, we need to put this refined thing to tell Koch type checker that we are no longer in a proof mode, but we are writing Galena terms. But 
Cock won't force us to write every single Galena term. It will tell us, write as much as you like and leave other details with underscore. So that's the first advantage of tactic and proof mode, um, tactics and functional programming mode. Now, the next thing we had, we could have easily written this match u with and then normal function. But I wanted to demonstrate that extra thing which we'll use in future when we go on more advanced dependent type programs. So here I'm saying match u as u prime. So u prime binds to in each branch to that specific value of u. And I have shown you by replacing this m with m, m prime with m. And you could have seen easily what was happening. So zero was replaced by in, in one case, it was zero in another case, it was just concrete M, even though we had this assumptions, M is equal to zero. And this one was a way to demonstrate EQ rect because we know that U is equal to U prime. So if we replace, It says that, and this kind of error would be very bizarre to you. So when you're playing with these examples, trying to, to replace it and see, and trying to try to understand EQ rect, that's the most important thing. So EQ rect, um, once you have an idea, what is EQ rect? You are probably, your expert. At that point, it will just take few more days or few more months to, to be an expert. Uh, so focus on understanding the concept of EQ rect. And it's simple, it's, it's very simple. And then we wrote here the whole return type. Since we added this, these two piece of information for our convenience to track what's going on in each block to have more information, we needed to pass these two in EQ raffles. And you can see that these things are just simply intros, but now we are writing in a Galena mode. So we need to write fun and we are not using any of these. So we can basically just replace it by underscore underscore. So we could have been better without these, but again, it's, it's just a concept and define. So it's today, it's the end of the video. It's end of the fourth one. And hopefully I'll continue to make some more uh, and demystify dependent types in Coq. And I'll try to invite some more people who are more expert than me on, on these videos. Okay, thank you very much.